Sanbonani, Sanbonani, Queens of Embo, where are you? Hi, 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 everyone. Let me try to set this up properly. It's always weird. There we go. Hi, everybody who is here. Let's see who's here. Ninjani, 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 Ninjani. I welcome you. I welcome you to our lesson tonight. Where is everybody? Please say hi as you come on. Let me know where you're tuning in from. And we can start our lesson. Seems awfully quiet. I'm wondering. Oh, I'm wondering whether anybody's home. Yes, and there's Momo. Hi, Monica. How are you, sweetheart? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Sawam Gela. Thank you for coming. Let's just wait around to see who else is going to be here. Yeah, you made it. Yes, girl. How you doing? I'm like, after this, it's got to be bedtime. Mm. It has to be bedtime, girl. Ooh, because every time I close my eyes, behind my eyes, all I see is food. Hey, Marvena, how are you? Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. Just going to wait a little bit for others to join us before I start. Hope everybody's been having a good day so far. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, you were chatting with Joyce. What has Joyce got to say about it? <laughs> I love Joyce. Joyce is my spirit animal. <laughs> Joyce is too much. I love Joyce. Let's see. I'm going to give it a few more minutes and then we're going to start because it's not a long lesson, but um, it can be longish. So I'm trying to see. Um, we start and then people can always watch the replay, right? If they miss stuff. Okay, so I see somebody else here. Please say hi as you join us. Hey, Veronica, how are you? Thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to start right away because, because time. I don't want to keep you guys here forever. I hope you guys have pen and paper because you might need to take notes. Mind you, you can always come back in and do the replay if you don't have pen and paper. But uh, what I wanted us to talk about today is what I uh, sort of uh, leading in from yesterday, which is, hey, Veronica, good evening. Hope you had a good day today. I want to talk about uh, setting up your spiritual altar. Now, let me be, be back it up for a minute. Before we can set up a spiritual altar to our ancestors, there are two things that need to happen. The one thing that is really critical and important is Remember that your ancestors are like God in so many ways, in that they see all, know all, and so on and so forth. So if you are somebody who is here and you are looking to connect with your ancestors because of something you can get out of them, you are in the wrong place. I'll tell you why. What you receive from your ancestors has nothing to do with your pleading. What you receive from your ancestor is a gift that they bestow upon you just because. It's the same thing we always say about the creator. We have water to drink. We have food to eat. We have all these things. Whether you are a villain or whether you are a, a saint, doesn't really matter if you're somewhere in between. We all get the same sunshine every day. We all get the same rain when it rains. Do you understand what I'm saying? So in other words, when you're approaching your ancestors, it is and must be literally to reconnect with them for the sake of the relationship. Just like nobody wants to be used, your ancestors definitely do not want to be used. So if your energy about this is one of, damn, I just need to get my life together. I need to get all things right in my life and, and get all my blessings. You're in the wrong place or maybe you are in the right place but at the wrong time because that can happen too. And so what that may mean is by all means stay in here 
by all means learn gather what you can but this may not be the right time for you to build an ancestor altar because i just want to warn you if you go about this with the wrong intention they will smite you if you go about this with the wrong intention it will not end well and what do i mean they will first and foremost they can do they can ignore you totally and then you'll feel frustrated and you're like i'm doing all the right things and then and then or they will retaliate in other words you might start stuff starting to you might see stuff starting to go wrong in your life now i want this out there as a warning guys because you're in here to learn right and as i'm teaching i'm giving you the pros and cons of certain things and i'm also giving you information that you can use don't go set up an altar and start some sit and then come say auntie was the one who said set up an altar and this this now look what's happened in my life mm -mm. i'm not telling anyone here to set up an altar i've told you at the very beginning when you come in here take what applies to you take what resonates and leave the rest so right now if it is not your time to set up an ancestral altar, you will feel it and you will know it. If your intentions are not quite there, you will feel it and you will know it. Remember, the ancestors you're trying to connect with are your five generations out. They're the ancestors like your grandma, your close ancestors for whom you still have pictures and images. That's where we're going to start. Who may manifest is another different story altogether. Because, see, the big, big ancestors, they choose you. <laughs> so, yeah, you're trying to connect with your grandma who you loved so much. You may be an aunt of yours that you adored, maybe an uncle. That's great. But you don't know who in your lineage will manifest because they want to gift you something. So who we are looking to connect with immediately is your living dead. The community of the living dead. And then those ones that are called Amatonga, the higher spirits, those might come and visit you. It happens, has happened, most likely will happen. So here's what you would need to do. So that's one thing. Make sure that your intention is correct and clear. The second thing you might want to do especially if even right now you're feeling some type of way, I would not advise you to set up an altar by yourself and start talking to whoever by yourself because there are spirits who will manifest as your ancestor when they are not. Believe you me, there's so many spirits that are hungry for a home out there. So what you want to do first is you need to find somebody who can give you a spiritual reading and a cleansing. If you're, say, like, I don't know who doesn't have anything that's bothering them, or if you have experience in the spirit realm, not necessarily in African traditional religion, but even just a spiritual being, if you are spiritual, if you're somebody who's, like, been filled with the spirit, even at church or wherever, you are more likely to know how to discern a good spirit from a bad spirit. And I would say you can go ahead and set up your altar. But if you are brand baby new to any of the spirit realm, you may want to go to someone reputable who is going to give you a reading, tell you who's around you and get rid of any malevolent spirits so that you can connect with your ancestors. And it's at that reading where you might actually get specific instructions for what your altar, your unique altar for your particular ancestors will look like. Because they do have preferences, you know. They do have things that they like. It's not generic. But what I'm going to give you is the basics. It's like the blueprint for how you would set up an altar. Right? So here it is. The first thing is you want to find a place in your home where there's low traffic. It could be a special room. It could be a closet that nobody ever uses. It could be a corner in your living room. What you don't want to do is you don't want to set up your altar in a place where you are uncomfortable with it there because that will set up an energetic where it's almost like and they read this they'll feel like oh so she's ashamed of having us around now you don't want to put yourself in any of those kind of tight situations so you don't want to go put your altar in your front room you're not going to put your altar by the front door as people come in too much traffic back and forth 
You want to find a quiet space, like I said, or a closet space, and you build your altar there. The next thing you're going to need is you're going to need a stable wooden table or a table that is made up of something natural. I would go for wood myself. I kind of like wood. It's solid and, and, you know, wood is elemental. You can have those kind of fancy uh, tables that are made out of uh, wicker, you know, like made out of wicker. That's grass. That's okay. That's organic. But choose, I would worry with wicker because of all the bumps and stuff, but I would just choose a plain table. And it doesn't have to be huge to begin with because remember, you're just working with your ancestors. These tables can grow bigger as other entities start to visit you and they can share the space. Some won't want to share the space, but others are okay. So you have a table. Oh, I'm trying to think like what size table? Like a little coffee table. Then the next thing you want to do is you want to get Florida water and you want to clean your table down. If you don't know what Florida water is, Florida water is almost like holy water. If you've been to church or water that's been sanctified, right? The Catholics have their holy water that the priest prays over. And I'm sure in many churches as well, they have that. So you want to get your Florida water and you want to wipe your table down, all of it. Then the surface of the table, you want to get your Florida water and you want to wipe in a clockwise motion to wipe the top. There's a reason we do a clockwise motion because again, we're dealing with energy. We're dealing with entities. Anti-clockwise is definitely not what you want. It's always a clockwise. So now you've cleaned your table. Then you want to choose a clean cloth for your altar, right? Some people choose white. That's okay. That's absolutely fine. Most people will choose white. Some people would choose, I, I like African print. You know, and because I know that my immediate ancestors are African, they will appreciate African print. But then again, your ancestors might love that too, because it is reminiscent of home. So go with how you're feeling. If white works for you, white is considered pure. White is usually a, a, a sort of repellent of negative forces, negative energies. Whatever you feel comfortable and, and, and happy with for your altar, you put that there. But also keep in mind who you're putting your altar for because they might have had a preference. Like I tell you, I know my grandmother loves uh, the fabrics, you know, sort of African fabrics. I've just got a piece here. African fabrics with colors, she loves bright colors. So that's what I would use for my altar, right? And the next thing you want to do is, and I talked a little bit about this yesterday. Remember, your altar is not about you guys. Your altar is about your ancestors. And most likely, your ancestors were Christian. Correct? So what you want to do is you make sure you put a Bible on there. Right? Florida water is something that you can order or you can get. I'll put some links down there, Nikki, uh, when I'm done. So some resources for you guys where you can go and get some of the stuff I'm talking about. So, yeah, so then you want to put your Bible on top and you want to put your Bible central and to the top of your table, towards the top, right? So you've got your Bible there. It's not about you. And I, it's hard for me to do that because, you know, my, my there's Christianity in my ancestry. Can't run away from it, so it's there. But most of you, Momo, you know that me and that stuff, we're done. But it's not about me. It's about my ancestors. So I will put that there. Then you want to get a glass of water. Usually it's like a nice wine glass and you put water in it and you put it on top of your Bible, right? That is how you welcome your ancestors in. Now, different traditions do this differently. Where I come from, from Zimbabwe, we actually take like a bowl of water, either metal or a wooden bowl, remember, or clay. You want to use something that is organic and of the earth. I like metal because once again, we're dealing with energy, right? And metal has electrons and lots of energy. So it's almost like a good conductor, if you know what I mean, a good attractant of the ancestors. So I use a metal bowl and I will sit it there by the altar. Now you can use your bowl on the days that you're, 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 you're being devotional to them. The glass of water stays there, right? And every other day you might want to empty that water out and put fresh water. You're not necessarily going to be sitting at the altar every single day to, to, to be with them. Okay, so that's that. The next thing you're going to need is if you've got pictures of your ancestors, pictures of your grandma, your uncles, your mama, whoever it is in your family that has passed, 
Remember, children cannot be ancestors. You definitely do not want children on this altar. Okay? Ancestors are people who died as your elders, not kids. Kids kids make kids do come back. The spirit of kids come and they'll manifest, but not as ancestors, right? So you will put pictures of them there. You might want to find things that they liked that you can put on the altar. For example, my dad loved cufflinks okay this man was dapper y'all this man he dressed to the nines everybody says i take after him i'm like guy mm. liked to look clean and sharp okay and so he loved cufflinks so i have a pair of cufflinks there my dad back in the day loved old spice cologne so i have old spice cologne there there was another one that we used to that he, they used to have in zimbabwe it's called brute it's like in a green the box is green. He liked that too. So sometimes I will have that there, right? My dad was a scotch whiskey drinker, which I am. Just shows I'm his child, right? I love scotch whiskey. That's like the only liquor I drink. And I drink it like on the rocks. That was daddy. So I will make sure that there's a bottle of Glenfiddich, the most expensive there, because he had very good taste. And look, guys, when you're doing for your ancestors, Please do not go to the Dollar Tree and go and buy some shit because let me tell you, these people, unless that is what you can afford and you can't fool them, give your ancestors the best. If all you can afford at that time is something from the Dollar Tree, go get it. If all you can afford is a candle from Walmart, go get it. But if you're nickel and... <laughs> If you're nickling and diming your ancestors, they are going to nickel and dime you. That's if they show up at all, because sometimes they don't. They're very temperamental. As above, so it is below. Okay? As below, so it is above. You imagine your old grandma and who she was. If she was a woman of high taste, who liked good food, who liked nice colognes and nice creams, nice perfume, who liked her hair done well, who liked makeup. Not just any makeup, but who liked top of the range things. And you're gonna go away, you're gonna go and you're gonna bring her some che El Cheapo stuff. If she was alive, what would she do? Or what would she say? That's what you have to keep in your mind. Because remember, you're preparing for your guests. You're preparing for your elders. You're preparing. Remember, you're their child. They love you, but they're still temperamental and still will exhibit very human characteristics. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm just remembering certain things that have happened to, to people I've known with this whole ancestor thing. You see the ball flying across the room because somebody's upset because you fed them food they didn't like. So you've got to make sure that you're doing, and remember it's a labor of love, right? You're wanting to invite them in to be a part of your life, to walk with you, right? So that's why I said the intention has to be right. This can't be a quick, okay, auntie said I must get an altar sheet. Tomorrow I'm gonna rush off to Dollar Tree, let me go pick up a tablecloth, let me go find me some little wooden table, let me go to Salvation Army and go find me a little cheap wooden table. Don't, <laughs> you rather wait until you can do it properly, okay? There's no rush job. They're not going anywhere, they're there. But I want you guys to learn and to understand who it is you'll be dealing with and interacting with in your space, right? Right, now, so you've got your pictures, you've got all the things they liked. Here's the thing, all that is great, but the one thing they desire from you is a connection. And how do you create connection? You create connection by spending time. Right? Any relationship requires time. And so what I would do is maybe every day, once you finish your altar in the morning, is go and sit by your altar and say your morning prayers. Ask them to walk with you. And this is something I've been asking the young activists out there to do before they go out into the streets. Please, can you ask your ancestors to walk with you as your protection? A lot of the times the stuff people are experiencing out on the streets at the hands of slave patrol is because they are not covered. So one way you do it, depending on what it is you go in, you can just do a little simple prayer to them, ask them to bless you and to protect you during the day. That's it. And you go off your way. The young people I was asking to do a ritual that is more robust because they were going to war. 
And so you need better fortification as you go to war, right? So just to let you know, there would be different rituals depending on what you were going out of your house to go and do. The next thing you want to do is common offerings to your ancestors. Was your grandma or your gogo a coffee drinker? Did she like tea? You might want to put, uh, you know, some tea bags and co or some coffee there. Did your grandma, whatever they like, did she like cookies? If she liked cookies, what kind? Did she like chocolate chip? If she liked chocolate chip, what was the brand? Chips Ahoy. Okay, go put some Chips Ahoy there for her. Right? And you don't have to open the packets and stuff. Just put them there. Right? Like your bottle of whiskey, just put it there. What I do is every now and then if I really miss my dad or I really want a connection is I will pour myself a glass and I'll pour him a glass and pour libation, pour some on the ground and then sit the glass there. And while I am connecting with him, I will sip my little glass of whiskey. I don't drink uh, heavily, but it is something that I've acquired as a taste because when I was younger and we were growing up, when he was drinking his whiskey from about the age of eight or seven, he'd always give me a sip. So it's one of the things that I have sort of acquired a taste for. So that's something we have in common. Think of things you used to do with your ancestor. If it's a near ancestor, think of things you used to do with them. What was it that you used? To, what was your favorite meal together? Right. Did she teach you to bake? Did she teach you to make some some delicacy? Yeah. When you make that, make two of them and put a plate for her and go and spend time on your day of spending time with your with your ancestors. Maybe you choose a Sunday. When I say time, I don't mean the 15 minutes every day. I mean like an hour, an hour and a half, or as however long it takes for you to feel like, okay, I've been here. And, and, and they will talk to you eventually. You just have to be consistent. And they have to see that you mean it. They, you know, it's like, okay, now she wants something. Now suddenly she wants to connect. All this other time, she hasn't even known of our existence. So you want to make sure that you are consistent if you say, I'm going to meet with them every Sunday at a certain time, I'm going to have my Sunday lunch with them. If you live alone, it's easy. If you have family, it becomes hard, but you can decide, you know what, we're going to have Sunday tea together. Then you go, it's quiet, it's you and them. You make your tea, make sure you have, they have their tea. You've got your cookies or whatever you're sharing with your tea and you sit there. That's your day to play their favorite music while you're there. That's your day if they liked hymns, if you knew any specific church songs that they liked. That's the day to sing to them and play. They love music, right? I have my drum because my, my people are drum people and they love to get down. So on those days I'm doing that, I am drumming and singing. And I also have my maracas. In fact, let me show you guys. Mm -hmm. So I also have my maracas. So sometimes, you know, I sing and I play those, um, or I play the drum, depending on what I feel is prompting. And I sit with them and we are together connecting in communion. It's actually fantastic. I look forward to those times. That's when you get promptings. You know, that's when you can hear them. You can hear promptings or stirrings in your soul. That is also the time when you start doing this, you need to pay attention to your dreams because the, this, the dream world is the realm in which your ancestors and the spirits move when your body is at rest. When your body is at rest, your spirit is very active. That is why it is usually nighttime that people do, uh, uh, you know, the, the traveling. That's, it's at night because when your body is resting, literally, that's when your spirit is active. And so they use that time. It's uninterrupted, undisturbed time to speak to you, usually through dreams or visions. Right. So keep that in mind. Start recording some of these things, because sometimes the message doesn't come in one dream. It can come as a series of dreams. Sometimes the message comes, you can't decode it. But if you write it down, you can take it to someone else and say, you know what? I've been having this kind of dreams. What do you think it means? And, and it's, it's interesting because they will direct you to who can interpret that. And it's not always who you think it is. You might have a friend who dabbles in dreams. They won't take you there. They'll, they'll direct you to who you need to go to, to get whatever message. Cause they want you to hear what they're saying. So they'll send you where you can get that decoded. Okay. 
So now you've got your, your, your altar set. I've described you some of the things that can happen there, but now we're going to go through something important that needs to happen first. Okay. So also you need that seven day candle. You need a seven day candle on your altar. You need an incense burner. You might need a bell. Where's my bell? Oh, here's my bell. If you don't know the story of the bells, you might want to Google what is the spiritual significance of bells. This is a very common thing, not just in modern Christianity, but even in African ancient times. Uh, do I interpret dreams? Yes, but um, let's have that conversation at some point, Christine. Um, so, so then, right? So, so here you are. You, you've got everything. You've got your incense burner, you've got your bell, you've got flowers. And again, it's, uh, please don't do plastic flowers. I'm begging you. Eesh. If you can't get like real flowers, leave it alone. Like for me in the winter, my altar hardly gets flowers. That's okay. But don't do plastic. I'm, <laughs> be warned. I'm warning you guys. Because if you come to me after you've done your plastic, I will laugh at you. <laughs> I will laugh at you after you get chastised because I've warned you. Okay, so that's you done. Here's what you do for the first three days. There is a ritual. This is the first ritual I am giving you guys. Here's your ritual. Day one, you're going to go to that place that you've set up. You're going to imagine the faces of your ancestors. You're going to pray out loud for them out loud for them, not to them, for them. I cannot give you the words for that. The words will come because you will pray for your ancestors based on what you know about them. Does that make sense? Then you will speak their names out loud and you will tell them that they are welcome. You will tell them that you have waited so long for them to be with you, that you're so grateful that they were your ancestors right? Then here's another thing you want to do, especially if you're brand baby new in this. Like I've said, if you're brand baby new and you're already disturbed and you feel like something is not right and you don't know what entity is around you, go and seek a cleansing, go and speak, seek a reading. If you're brand baby new, but you're okay, you're like, okay, I think I can do this. You're good, but you still need protection. So you can, at this point, invoke St. Michael. That is a protector angel. You can invoke your own guardian angel. I, if your brand baby new, you cannot tell you to invoke any of the African warriors yet because we have not gone into that. But that does not prevent you from setting up an altar th through which your ancestors can come and be. Does that make sense? Because remember, guys, in the spirit realm, all things are used for the greater good, for your greater good. Like I explained to you that because of a law in Southern Africa, the, the law that banned all spirit mediums and practitioners and called them witches, they, were, they went into the church because that was the only way that they could practice their gifts. They couldn't do it separate from the church. So they went into the church and they were prophetesses and prophets and they were using holy water. They couldn't throw bones for divination anymore, but they could take a plate of water and read what was going on in their spirit will use what spirit wants. We know who St. Michael is. St. Michael is real, right? In the Catholic tradition and in the Christian tradition, he has that name. But in other traditions like our African, he has another name. We will deal with that later when we do that. But make sure you have that protected. Some people, I am of, um, what is this, uh, Catholic background. When I was growing up, I had a great devotion to Mary. I still do, but not in the way that I was taught to venerate Mary. Uh, as, as Because they always talk about Mary being next after the Trinity. Well, I don't buy into that whole Trinity thing. For me, Mary is God. So, hey, have a statue of Mary, have a rosary there, whatever takes your fancy for protection. What I know for sure is these spirits will protect you and will make sure that any negative spirits that are around, 
just kind of lurking, gets shooed away very quickly. So between the incense, between your ancestors being guarding, they guard you very jealously. And between your protector spirits, either Mary, the Archangel Michael, your own guardian angel, all sentient beings that come into this world to protect you, invoke them, you're good. The newbie, the brand baby new is the one who may have a spiritual attachment because once it's attached, that kind of protection won't work. That's why I said before you do anything, please go get a reading. And if cleansing is needed, get a cleansing. I hope that makes sense, guys. So that's day one. Day two is the day you cook a meal, right? Something, something that you know they like. Okay, I'll give you an example. My grandma, my gogo liked oxtail, okay? So I don't cook her oxtail every week or it's too labor intensive. I told her, gogo, uh-uh, we get oxtail once a month. <laughs> so once a month, I cook yummy oxtails for her. She had other things she liked, so I can always do other things in, the, in, in between. But once a month, I cook yummy oxtail for her. I put some oxtail on a plate. I take my oxtail. I go and I sit with her. She liked uh, Roman Catholic church music. I, I, there's plenty on YouTube. So I put that on and we sit and we commune. And most times she left me this red head tie. I'll put on my red head tie just to feel close. She used to like wearing a rosary. I'll put on a rosary for her. All the things I know she liked. And then we'll sit there and commune. And usually that night or that week, she will, she will come to me with a message or a dream. My grandma is the person who helps me to read for other people. Like she's usually connecting me, especially white people. She stands between me and a lot of white people I've had to do readings for. So, and, and what happens is, they usually send their ancestor to me and my grandmother comes in like this and says, where are you going? And then they have to tell her, okay, she's in contact with my child so-and-so. I need this message to go to so-and-so. And my grandmother will say, oh yeah, B, wake up. Yes, mama. Then she'll say, right. There's this one here who says she wants you to hear. So they cannot speak directly through me. She's very protective of me, extremely. And so are my other protectors. So she's literally guarding between these other spirits and they, she, they relay message to her and she then relays to me and it goes that way. Yeah, the work gets done. It's not as cumbersome as it sounds, but my grandmother don't play. <laughs> Neither to some of my angels. Okay, so then that's that. And then, so you cook, you we play our music, we eat, whatever, whatever. Here's the thing about the food, guys. You want to leave your plate. Please do not go and put copious amounts of food, okay? You're not feeding the whole village, please. Otherwise, your house will stink because you have to leave that food until it, you know, usually it's like two days it's sitting there and then you got to throw it out, okay? So you don't want to cook mountains and mountains of food because then... Which they don't like too, right? They don't like mess. They don't like stenches. They don't like nasty. They're very temperamental creatures, let me tell you. You'll learn. You'll see. <laughs> so just, you know, talk an amount of food for them to show that, you know what, we're having a meal together. Then after a couple of days, you take it off. That only happens once a week, the whole let's eat together long thing, right? Not the 15 minute things that you're doing on a daily. 15, 10 minutes even. Just say a little prayer before you exit your house. Then, uh, say a prayer out loud. So they, on all these days of your first ritual, you're praying out loud for them, right? You're praying out loud for them and you're also thanking them for coming into your life. You're thanking them for coming and being with you. Take your time there. Day three, you can bring gifts as offering. This is where you bring maybe a perfume. You bring fresh flowers, right? If, you're, if your Nana liked chocolate, bring her a bar of chocolate and put it there, right? If your Uncle Jimmy, if that's your favorite uncle who you feel you want to have at your altar with his pictures, if your Uncle Jimmy liked, I don't know, he liked tobacco in his pipe, then get a pipe, put some tobacco in it and put it there, right? And then tell them how grateful you are that they're coming to grace your home, that they're coming to be part of your household, take care of you and your children and your family and generations to follow. That, my dear sisters, is how you call your spirits in. Now, as I've said to you before, 
These people are fastidious. They don't like a nasty house. They don't like mess. That altar has to be clean. You have to prioritize making sure there's no ash. There's no, from your incense, there's no nasty candle wax left. They like clean. Uh, hear me well. They like cleanliness. Okay? Take it from... <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm just warning you guys because I've, 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 I've heard some horror stories. I'm just wanting to warn you. They love you, yes, but just imagine, like I said, your grandma coming into the house and it's a mess. What's she going to say? Oh, my grandma didn't play. She was a very neat, classy lady. Didn't like, mm -mm -mm. She'd be like, hey, hey, do pigs live in here? What is going on? Okay. No laundry, Monica, hint, hint, lying around because they'll toss that laundry across the room in a minute. Just keep everything nice and neat in your home because it is no longer just your home. It is your home with you and your ancestors. Okay. Now, what else? I think we've covered everything, really, uh, in terms of... Yeah, Monica, you're laughing because you know you're wrong. <laughs> you know. If I, this is a time maybe when I can ask uh, some, some general, you can ask me general questions. Please don't ask me personal questions, guys, because like I said, we want to keep the space safe for everyone. And there's some stuff that might spook people out, but I'm here. We can ask some questions and I will try to answer them. Monica, if you see questions that I seem to have missed, if you can write them down for me, I'd really appreciate you. How do we get Florida water? Oh yeah, I've already answered that. I'll put resources for you to get Florida water. A lot of the spiritual shops will have Florida water for you, um, Nikki. Um, I think you can even get Florida water on Amazon. It's a common kind of thing, Florida water. Uh, it's just known as a spiritual water, holy water. Um, what else? Uh, Yes, I've answered the question about interpreting dreams. Yes. Um, but Monica, just uh, Nikki. Is it Nikki? Is Christine who asked that? Christine, I don't do readings and I don't do any spiritual work except when I'm called and if I feel called to. Like I said, my ancestors and your ancestors have to have a connection. Like I've just explained what happens with my grandma which is that if anyone wants anything, usually it's the ancestor of somebody who is around me, who wants to say something, but even they don't come directly through me. They cannot, they come through my grandma. She's the ancestor who facilitates that. Likewise, if somebody wants a reading from me, it cannot be their desire it can't be you, Christine. It has to be your ancestor, Christine's ancestor, saying this is the woman who's going to give you the reading. I will know that you are the one or I'm meant to be reading for you because they make a connection with my ancestor. And my ancestor will tell me, even before you approach, that there is a woman such and such who is coming and this is her issue. If I need to prepare myself in any way or, or shape, way, shape or form, then I prepare myself for your arrival. Most times you will arrive and I'll know exactly what it is you want. You don't have to tell me. I'll sit there and tell you, oh, Christine, so this is this and this and this and this. Okay, so this is this and this and this and this. And this is what your ancestor is saying about this. You had a dream about this, this, this. They... It, it's literally that deep. That's why I'm like, this is not a joke. This, this people, the people who dabble don't know what they're doing. The people who dabble uh, will flounder and talk nonsense. But this is so straightforward. If you really are moving in spirit and you have this gift, you don't need to do much talking to me. The ancestors do. And then my ancestor tells me what I need to know. And guess what? Your ancestor, I can deliver your message because if you're brand baby new, and you're still learning, yeah, you won't know how to decode some things, which is why you might bring your dream to somebody who can interpret it. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, what else can I give? Can you tell us about the bells? Well, in spirituality, the bell... You guys have heard of church bells, right? They call the church bells, and they will tell you that church bells are a way of calling people to prayer. Correct? Now... In my tradition, 
we had bowels, you know, not church bowels, but we have a bowel in the spirit realm. And the bowel is literally a way, the frequency, remember this is all energy, guys. There's a certain frequency at which that sound is coming to you and vibrates. And it's you, it's the frequency of the spirits. Yeah. And so when you, when you ring your bell and there's a certain way of ringing it, not just what I did, but there's certain ways of ringing a bell, which call in your spirits, which alerts them to the fact that you're looking for them. Not that they're not around. They are, but you know how you need to someone sometimes call someone to attention, right? Like, Hey, help. I need you. Even if somebody's right next to you, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're paying attention directly to what you need. So that's what the bell is for. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, so did, I hope that made sense. You can read more. I mean, different traditions have different things with the bell, but the bell is very central to spiritual practices. Uh, any other questions? I'm sorry to see if I've got any other questions coming through. Um, I don't see any other questions, guys. Well, here's the thing too. Like I've said, if you've got questions, as long as they are not personal questions, you can type them under the chat. Um, Monica and I are going to work on trying to see if we can create some kind of private room or private way in which you guys can drop personal questions and maybe your phone numbers. And then I can get back to you on personal on personal issues. I mean, clearly I understand that there, you know, most people are here maybe just to learn the general, but I know that usually when this happens, even those who thought they were coming here to learn something general, sometimes spirit starts moving and things happen. I'm well aware of that and I'm prepared for that. So we'll try and create a way in which you can reach me other than messenger because messenger can be a mess. Other ways you can reach me either by leaving your phone number so I can get back with you and we can chit chat a little bit more about what's going on with you and maybe chart a way forward. Um, if I am not the one to do the work for you, I can certainly then ask spirit to guide you and guide us to get you to where you need to get to. Does that make sense? All right, ladies, I think this is it, right? If there, and if there are no more questions, I think we're done for tonight. Um, I will be back in here tomorrow um, with, uh, I don't know, they will direct, but at least I know that where the ancestors are concerned, we've kind of talked about it. You now understand the hierarchies and we've done what we might do. You start talking about the different practices across the continent and maybe show you, I showed you the basic blueprint of what African spirituality looks like. But in within there, there are certain nuances. And I know that for a lot of my African-American sisters, the Western uh, practices probably ring more for bell than Southern Africa, simply because a lot of your immediate, and when I say immediately, I mean like four, 500 years, ancestry comes out of that part of the world. Although there could be some East African as well. So we'll just take it step by step. There are several different practices across the continent. Um, I gave you the basics and we'll go into them. Uh, and I think we will start with West Africa uh, because uh, the practice of hoodoo, which is our sort of uh, traditional African-American spirituality, incorporates a lot of the West African trends, like I said, for, for, the, for the reasons that I mentioned. So we might start there and uh, we might actually just look at uh, the African spirituality, the Orishas uh, of Yoruba land and others that are in that region. And then, um, you know, we might open it up to look at some hoodoo practices and the similarities are glaring, but then look at how hoodoo developed and what it is, what it has evolved into in this part of the world and what it came out of. So I love you guys so much. I appreciate you for being here. Please, please, please take good care of yourselves until we meet again. And I'm going to just say a prayer of blessing over you. Marare nemi panguwa inu. Marare afambe nemi pakumuka kwenyu ni kurara kwenyu. Jose jamoe wenyu jamuno da mariva kupei. Iji jose tino kumbira muzita. Rava zimu vedu. Wose north, south, east, west. Tino zitenda. Thank you guys so much and I will see you tomorrow. Good night.